just read down, starting at verse 17 down to the end of the chapter. Let's read responsibly, beginning at first, uh, verse 17. Now in this that I declare to you, I praise you not, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone takes, take it before other, his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. Well, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together to condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the word of God. We are here, Lord God, to hear your precious word. And asking, Lord God, that you will open it up to us that we may understand more concerning your mind, your wisdom. In the precious name of Jesus, I thank you and I give your name to praise. Bless those that are listening by way of television. Let some soul be drawn closer to you. Let some person be delivered or healed. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. This, uh, this passage here deals pretty strictly with the Lord's Supper. But there's a couple of things there that I feel like the Lord uh, spoke some days ago, and uh, he reiterated it to me. And I had a little booklet that uh, I was supposed to bring, but I didn't bring it, that had some excerpts that uh, further drove home this truth. But uh, so um, <clears throat> this is the letter to the church at Corinth or the Corinthians. And there's two, somebody said there was another one written to the church at Laodicea. Paul alluded to that, but we have these two here. And in this book here, Paul was talking and writing to the church at Corinth and their background was they came out of a lot of uh, witchcraft and occult and things of this nature. So they were quite familiar with the spiritual aspect of life, not necessarily the, uh, uh, the Lord's aspect, but spiritual you know, dealing with the uh, other world. And so when they came to Jesus, uh, they were, um, it was easy for them to open up to the supernatural, even in God. 
And so this church was very gifted. They had so many gifts. And, uh, but there were some difficulties there that uh, we'll point out briefly. And with the idea, and I think this, just the thought, so that you can keep in mind, we want to talk briefly about just self-examination, judging ourselves. I believe that's the, the thought that the Lord uh, uh, was making clear. You know, you go on in life, and I've often said when I was in retail, ever so often they would do inventory. And at the end, end of the year, they would do inventory. And what was so amazing is we just found merchandise that we almost didn't know it was there. And so what was happening, that merchandise was tying up our, what they call open to spend or open to buy. So we were limited as to what we could spend. We couldn't buy new, too, much, too, many new merchan, too much new merchandise because our open to buy was limited because there was things in our stock or inventory that had just been sitting there. So, but when we took inventory, we were able to see that which was just there. It wasn't selling. It was just sometime in the stock room, sometime under the shelves, but there. And uh, so what we had to do then after inventory, we had so many dollars. We said, wow. And then when we made some adjustment, we got rid of. Either we transfer it out to some other store, we put it on sale to get rid of it, whatever. But, and when we did, it opened, gave us more open to spend. So now this is not tied up. You know, we're gonna have merchandise here and that's in our inventory. And so, we can, so now we can buy more new items and uh, put it on display for the customers. So it made a better thing. So inventory was, we found to be very, very helpful. In life and in our Christian life is very similar. Ever so often we must pause and take inventory, do self-examination, and the scripture says, examine yourself, see whether you're in, be in the faith. Paul did that, Peter, I think it was Peter, and one of the others talked about it as well. So I realized that this text that we read deals strictly with the, their attitudes towards the Lord's Supper and their attitudes in their love feast. Their love feast was something that they held regular, and, but the way they did it, it was supposed to be very helpful for the body in a time of unity, time of a, a, a really just a fellowship, good fellowship, and then after they did their love feast, their eating and so on, then they would have, they would take the Lord's Supper. And, but they didn't really understand, they didn't really discern, let me say it like that, distinguish the Lord's Supper and the purpose of that. So uh, that's the, just briefly the background concerning that. But let's look now a little closer into the scriptures. Uh, concerning the church. We find here that they were gifted, charismatic, um, but there was a little problem. They were carnal. By that, that means they were saved, but they were pretty much just looking at life and looking at this whole thing just like they were just mere humans. And they were not understanding really who they were, and some of them were not growing. So uh, naturally, it proposed a problem. If you look at chapter 3, you'll look at a little bit of this information. <clears throat> some of them had little cliques. They had favorites, people that they would listen to, and others they wouldn't pay them any mind. Thank God. Look at somebody say, thank God that doesn't happen here but living word. Well, sometimes people, they, they have little cliques, personalities. 
somebody can preach a little better than the other so they kind of gravitate toward that or somebody can uh, 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 are more eloquent in the scriptures and things of this nature or somebody may be deeper than the other but that's what happened there was Peter you know the fellow that he had some notoriety around his name he was he was the fellow that really was with the Lord walked with God he was one of the twelve and then there was Paul who was not with one of the twelve but he was well known then, then there is Apollos and then, you know he was very eloquent in scripture so uh, some people say I, I'm a Paul and the others say well no no I'm a Peter somebody said oh no no I'm a Paul and then there, 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 there's a group that says I, I'm uh, don't, don't worry those people I'm I'm a Jesus person, you know, that's it. But whatever they said, it was cliquish. That's the point that I want to make. And so since they were cliquish, they were divisive. Uh, they, they had, they gravitated towards certain personalities uh, so that they really didn't appreciate as they should all the gifts in the body. And so this uh, was not pleasing to the Lord. That was in the beginning. So let's, let me read a few excerpts from chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Synonymous with carnality is a baby. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able, for you are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are you not carnal and walk as men? For while one say, I am of Paul, another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So then, very key, so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Isn't that good, y'all? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so now the thought comes to me, all of my help comes from the Lord. Are you with me? got to remember that now all of our help comes from the Lord now he will not share his glory all right all right <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> so if you want to get along with God you got to leave that alone okay <laughs> But this was, this was going on in the church at Corinth. And then there was envy and strife, as we saw in the, the verse there, living like regular humans. They didn't understand that they were called out of that natural, carnal way of looking at things. And then there was fornication in the church. All right, now let's look at chapter 5. The Bible says, <clears throat> verse 1, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such, is, such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body but present in spirit have judged already as though I were present concerning him that have done, so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 
the leaven is the is we like in it, we say yeast. You know the rolls when you make rolls, the yeast makes it rise. Am I correct? Yeah. Well, the Israelites couldn't use leaven. It would cause it to inflate. They used, they didn't use leaven, so since they couldn't use the yeast, that which the, the bread that they made would not rise, and so it was not mixed with that which makes it puffed up. And so in our New Testament way of looking at and understanding this, Leaven, as he points out, it can be malice or insincerity. But unleaven is likened to sincerity and commitment. You, you know, when we, we get saved... When we really grasp what really took place and the sacrifice that was made so that we could enjoy life eternal, it makes a person want to live right. Or it, let me say it like this, it should make a person want to live right. For Christ paid a very dear price that we would come out of darkness into light. So, if we think in terms of the yeast which causes the bread to inflate or puff up, they had to eat it without that yeast. So, there was fornication, as I pointed out, in the midst of them. So, verse 7 says, purged out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump. Are you with me? A new lump. That means without the, 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 the leaven. And then um, in verse 8 also says, let us keep the feast not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. We are speaking now concerning let a man examine himself and I would, I'm not taking that out of context. I'm simply using the term, let a man examine himself, and examination deals with a discerning, distinguishing, and um, testing or proving, this kind of thing. So when we think in terms of our lives, we want to make sure that our lives are in step with the Lord as much as we, we understand. Can I get a witness? So purge out the old leaven. Then there were lawsuits against the brethren. And then there was uh, questions about meat offered to idols. And, uh, problem with the giftings of the spirit. They just didn't understand uh, that concerning the gifts of the spirit. And then they were more concerned about that than they were about love. And uh, so Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, that if I had all the gifts and everything so that I could, uh, or if I had faith so that I could move mountains and have not love, I'm really nothing. And even if I was a uh, philanthropist, if I could just give my body to be burned I'm a, and I had not love, it doesn't really profit me. These scriptures are not just nice scriptures. This is real stuff. That's how God looks at things. Oh, yeah, he long suffering. He long, he good and kind, but he looks at his word. That is truth. And I, here's what I've discovered. Because we don't know truly that God says what he means and means what he says we take it lightly and years can go by when we just take it lightly and we constantly say God is very gracious and he is 
But how many know that he's, this, his word is there for a reason? To help us. So I want you to just bear with me now because this is something that I feel God, God was just, just kind of helping me to see how he looks at things. You know, yes, he's long-suffering, and yet we got to understand the foundational truths that God is a God of grace and mercy and his love. But God really wants us to grow to maturity. And I, I'm just thinking now, if, let's say if one of my daughters just never grew up, they became midgets or like midgets, I would be very concerned. Probably take them to every doctor, every where I could to find out why they are not growing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so the same thing with God. I know some are growing. I'm not speaking uh, as a blanket. I'm speaking uh, um, for the sake of perhaps those of us that are not growing. It's really, really important that we grow. All right. Um, Let's look at uh, chapter 10. Chapter 10 in 1 Corinthians, we find that Paul was going back and rehearsing uh, to the church at Corinth the things that took place in the wilderness. Now, and when you read that, you might say, well, Paul, wait a minute, this is New Testament, so you don't really need to be bringing up nothing in the Old Testament because that's under the law. But that's not what, he, that's not what look, at it, look at it closely. Verse 10, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, were all baptized to Moses in the cloud, in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now, listen to this, these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after what? Evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them for examples and they are written, are you hearing me? For our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. It is really, really important for us to understand that at this time God is, is sanctifying his church. I, I, I believe I'm a first partaker and God uh, is soon to come, but he's not coming back for the church that's doing what they want to do. That's not the kind of church he's coming back for. And I hope that I can communicate today. I'm wanting to communicate what God has been speaking to my heart about. Now, I was... I was praying for someone put on my heart and I was just praying, really calling upon the Lord. And they've been sick for a while. I said, Lord, Lord, I know you're a healer. That's not a question in my mind. My question is, what is the hindrance to this healing? And this is what the Lord said. He said, if we would judge ourselves. And he paused. So I said, are you saying this concerning this situation? And I felt him witness to my heart. Yes. Now, I want, you to, I want to go back before I go any further to what I just read. 
in 1 Corinthians 11. Verse 28, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, are you with me? Many, didn't say a few, are weak and sickly among you. But he didn't stop there. And many die prematurely. That's how serious it is. And when I saw that, I thought, oh my God. The same God that blesses us is the same God that allows, that comes to judge when we don't judge ourselves. And I remember praying for a particular person, hard praying, and the Lord says, they are so angry with me. I thought, God, Jesus. What happens in those situations? They failed to judge themselves. So God couldn't do anything. Look at somebody say it's serious. The church at large is going through a lot of things right now. But the Lord is allowing things to take place to get us corrected. It is so important. He doesn't exempt some, right? He starts with the head. He starts with whoever. But, and so, but the good thing is once we open ourselves to God dealing with us rightly as he does and strive to know the whys and what he's looking for and we give him what he's after, isn't that right? It goes well with us. And that's the pattern of the scripture. So, uh, they were having lawsuits and then he was talking to Israel concerning the wilderness. Paul said these things were our examples that we would not turn around and do the same thing. Isn't that right? So, and then, so the judging aspect, he said if we would judge ourselves, if we would examine ourselves. Now, let me clear up this before we go any further. Now, we know according to the studies, that two, there was two parts to, to this. They had their love feasts and they were coming together, but it seemed like there, was a, there were social classes, all right? And because there were social classes, you know, when they would come together, um, they, those that were more well-to-do, they wouldn't even eat in the same place with the poor. But in Christ, that was not, expect it to be the same way because they were all equal but it seems that when they would come together they would keep that social distinction that social class distinction and they wouldn't eat with them and as a matter of fact some of them would, with their luxurious dinners they would eat them so that when the others came poor and didn't have anything they're sitting there looking uh, embarrassed because they don't have food and this was supposed to be a love feast where everybody would eat now, Paul was, Paul said, I, shall I, you looking for me to praise you about this? Now, and this is why he was saying, whoever eats and drinketh unworthily or in an unworthy manner. What are you saying is this year? Now, to better understand what Paul was trying to communicate that God was saying and how he revealed it to him, let's go back to the Passover. When God delivered Israel, that Passover was a very serious ordinance. And they were to take it with a, with very, with a seriousness about themselves, remembering that God brought them out of Egypt. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Now, when Jesus instituted this ordinance of the Lord's Supper, it was just as serious because when they ate that bread, that time that Jesus was pointing out, he says, one of you going to betray me. And, of course, you know it was Judas, but Jesus gave his very life blood for the redemption, for the deliverance of God's people. And so now it's just as serious as this old Passover. Jesus is saying that when this thing is taken, Paul was saying, this, there must be a seriousness and understanding what it represents first and foremost. So you, this is not just a feast you come together and, you, and, 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 and not allow uh, your brother to be fed and all this. In other words, it was their attitude toward the other brethren which was in the body of Christ. And so the Lord is at this time purging our attitudes about others in the body of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so in order for God to do that, he's got to lower us and make us understand that one is no better than another one. The same Lord that supplies your need, he'll supply my need. The same Lord's blood that washed me, washed you. You got to hear what I'm saying in order to appreciate what God is saying. And for Paul was dealing with their attitude toward the body of Christ. We can't afford to go around talking about somebody in the body of Christ. We're all a part of the body. We all was washed in the blood. We all need God. I don't know about you, but brother, I need God. Hallelujah. And so we must, like Paul was sharing with them, have a helpful, loving attitude toward one another. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what God is all about. So he was dealing with me about this thing. It says, in his body, that's what has to happen. Now, the terrible thing was because they were not discerning when they ate of this, took of this communion, in, uh, the Lord's Supper, for that cause, God had to judge them because this ordinance was of sacred importance and they were to understand what that thing meant. Because, listen to me, if, if, if I'm just taking of the Lord's Supper and it has, I don't understand fully that this ordinance is to be reverent. Then I'm not gonna get the benefit of what it's supposed to be. And so Paul turns around and says, for this cause, many are weak and many are sickly and many even die prematurely. It was that serious. Jesus died for our sins. And when we celebrate these ordinances, we must understand the importance of it. Are you hearing me? So when I partake of the Lord's Supper, I understand that all of us are his children. And if I have malice or envy or hatred in my heart toward any man or woman, I need to deal with that. Are you hearing me? I need to deal with that. We all are God's people. So he said, purge it out so that we can be a new lump. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature, a new lump, my God. So God is purging and cleansing us so that we can be what we are supposed to be, right? Okay, so we wanna, but the thing that he said was that judging ourselves, really taking a time of examination and, and understanding, okay, God, where am I? Do you know, uh, uh, are, are there issues in my heart that, uh, that I can't get, get over and so on? Praying and ministering and hearing God's mind. Now, 
Let me share it with the, uh, I, I didn't bring the book, and I'm trying to remember a little bit of it. Kenneth Hagan, um, who's dead and gone now, he was uh, many of the one that were my age and older, you probably remember. <laughs> anyway, he was a well-known brother in the, in the, in the faith, and um, he started the faith movement. And uh, he was sharing about, he went to a, a, a minister and he, uh, God said, uh, I want you to take him, tell him this. He said, tell him that he's not going to live long, much longer if he does not judge himself. So Hagen said, the Lord said, there are three areas that he must judge himself. He said his diet, his love, and his giving. So, now when I, listen, years ago, God told me, he said, I want you to eat more fruits and vegetables. Show you how serious this is. So I sat down to a big plate, every kind of vegetables I could think of. And the Holy Ghost said, that's very good. Did it once, more, one or, twice, once or twice more, and after that, that was it. I went right back to eating what I love. Now, that was about 15 years ago. Look at somebody say, God is merciful. Then about five years ago, he started dealing with me about the sweets. First, he dealt dealing with me by, I'm, 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 I'm sharing with you, I'm exposing myself because I want you to understand it's very important. 15 years ago, God said, I want you to, he said, you, you have a real craving for rich food. He says, ask God to help you. I said, no, I got this. I, I, I got this. I, you know, <laughs> I, I can stop, you know. So I set out to stop. And when I set out to stop, it got twice as bad. So then I, I stopped and said, Lord, I repent. Forgive me. I need your help, please. And it wasn't but a few months. God helped me. Very seldom do I eat rich foods now like that. God took it away. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, about five years ago, I'm sipping a lot of tea. So God says, I'm going to just drink more water. I'm going to show you how God cares for us. Sometimes you might think God's picking on you. He's trying to preserve your life. God is a good God. So here I am, I'm drinking tea because I love tea, all right? I sat down to the table and more and see a glass of tea and I just couldn't, I just had to have it. I've been just like, God. And uh, so I started drinking a little bit more water and time went on and I, I think I went on for about a month just drinking more water. I was feeling pretty good. And after that, I went right back to it, drinking more tea. So then he comes back again and when I'm praying, I see a glass of water in the spirit. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> so I said, okay, I get you. <laughs> so I drink. I started drinking more, but <laughs> y'all say, y'all, y'all ain't like that, but anyway. <laughs> it was an appetite. I just had this appetite for sweet. But anyway, so God is long suffering. Then months and months went down. So finally, I cut back and then I kind of eased back into it right easy. <laughs> so then the Lord says, he gave me a ratio. He said, for every one glass of tea, you drink 25 glasses of water. So what that meant is, if I drank 45 glasses of water, I can't have any until at least one day out of the week. I kind of figured it up, okay. <laughs> but I'm showing with you 
if I would not judge myself after I understand God telling me that certain foods, you need to leave it alone year after year and then when things happen in my body, I cannot look at God funny because he tried to warn me years ago. So when I heard Hagen say, God say, tell him if he doesn't judge himself, he's gonna die. I said, this is serious stuff. But listen, I'm not trying to die early. Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> so I've, I've been doing better because I see how serious it is. God doesn't have to say this. Now, as human, here's how we work. You need to really hear what I'm saying. I'm really, really serious. This is serious. God doesn't talk like that. He just speaks to you. But if you understand who's talking to you, you got to pay attention. Isn't that right? He may come back another month or two or three or maybe that time before he come back again because his voice, his truth. He doesn't have to try to convince you that he's truth. He is God. And when you hear him talking, it must be a reverent attitude. Say, yes, Lord. Because of who he is. When I was with the Assemblies of God, this man that was the head of the Assemblies of God, he was a highly uh, distinguished an important man over the whole of the assemblies of God and he was such a man of his word just such a statesman and uh, my pastor back then Hampton he was telling me about one day he went to him about something because the, when he first got in the organization there were some things that went down and um, so he went to the head and told him some of the things that was going on and uh just wanted to know if he could send a letter or something to the particular church or the district, you know, to kind of help get things straightened out. But this superintendent over all the symbols of God was such a very well-known man of his word and man of integrity. So he said, you tell pastor so-and-so that I said so-and-so. And so the pastor said, okay, okay can, can, you, can you give us a, a letter uh, uh, stating this? And he just looked at him with a nice little smile. He said, you don't need a letter. Just tell him what I said. He had that kind of clout, that kind of importance that when a district official would hear coming from him, that was a done deal. That was just a man, but I'm talking God now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you don't need a whole lot of affirmation and saying, Lord, can you show me this? Can you give me this? Can you give me this? You don't need all that. When God speaks, it's important, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we know who's talking to us. The judge of the whole earth. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. And anyway, he said there was a, another. Anyway, the story behind this man, three years later, they were in a service, Kenneth Hagan. And that's preacher. This, the, the, the service, they had several preachers in there and they were praying for this very man that he had given that word that didn't judge himself. And um, he said they were calling up the pastors to, to pray for this pastor because he was dying. So as he got up along with the others, he said the Holy Spirit said, go back and sit down. He says he's going to die. So then he said, uh, he told a couple of pastors that was going up with him, he said, uh, the Lord told me not to go up. He, he said that the man's going to die. A few weeks later, the man was gone. There's another situation. 
where he said the Lord, he was praying, got ready to pray for somebody. They were on their deathbed. And so he went to lay his hands on them and the Lord lifted his hands and said, don't pray. He said, they're going to die. He said, they didn't judge themselves. Saints of God, it's real. It is real. You don't know why many times people uh, uh, die prematurely and you pray for them and you pray for them and you pray for them and you don't understand. But we must understand that God means what he says. He says if we would judge ourselves, then God wouldn't have to do it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But if we don't do it, he said, when we're judged by God, we are chastened of the Lord. So some things, people are being chastened because they did not judge themselves. It really is important, y'all. And I'm taking it very serious. I was talking to the Lord. And, and, and uh, so as I was thinking in terms of this and just saying, oh, God, going back, you know, sometimes God may give you a word, but you, if you, you have wisdom, you, you kind of take that thing and say, well, let me examine myself. A sad thing is whenever you say, this word is for this sister or this brother, and you never take a moment to see why he said it to you. And that's dangerous, I found out. That many times God wants us, he'll speak something to us hoping that we'll get it when we give it to somebody else. Some people don't know that about the prophetic, but it is. So look at somebody and say, don't be quick to just give a word. But if you don't know, it may be for us first. That's what I've discovered over the years. God in his great wisdoms, it's like I, I hope they'll pay attention to what I'm saying for their own lives first. Isn't that right? God is good. Okay. All right. Now, so this is what he said as, I, as he started talking to me. He said, unforgiveness. And not only, he started downloading some information. So here's what, what, what he said. He said, when unforgiving spirits are cast out, many times spirits of infirmities will be cast out also along with them. Now, spirits of infirmity afflict the physical body. And a spirit of infirmity can be there and he can just torment that body, just torment that body. And he can pray, get well, take all kinds of medications, all kinds of doctors, and can't get well because of a spirit of infirmity that has to be cast out. But a lot of times they take resident when a spirit of unforgiveness is there because, and this is what he said also about unforgiving spirit. He says, an unforgiving spirit is a blocking spirit. It's a blocking spirit. It'll block a person's spiritual progress. Wow. And it'll block a person's ability to receive from God spiritually. And then he said, that spirit causes stagnation. Stagnation is when a person can't go, it's like they spin in their wheels. Has anybody ever felt that way? Feel like you're just spinning your wheels? Look like you, you're existing, you're doing, but you, you're not really either growing, you're not going, not. That unforgiving spirit causes stagnation. So five years down the road, 10 years down the road, they can be in the same place. So, I think it's about to say, I sure don't want to be there. So then he says that unforgiving spirit partners with a spirit of anger. I hope I ain't giving you too much information here. It partners with a spirit of anger. They're buddies. And he said that's why many times it's difficult to be thankful 
It's difficult to be thankful. So what do we do? We reach out to God and ask him to help us. The, they block God's flow of healing power because it's the law of the kingdom. He says, if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive you. Isn't that right? That's the word. They block the faith. He said they block the faith by unbelief. Because now the scripture says, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. What that means is, if the sun keeps going down on our wrath, it has given a door for Satan. And so, and he also says, of course, what I just said, it gives place to the devil. And he, the last thing I'm going to share, he said, it causes us to judge one another or be critical of one another. And God wants us to renounce those things and allow him to help us. I'm so glad that God can heal unbelief and un, uh, unforgiveness. God is, he specializes in such. He wants us, he said, he wants us to live lives like true saints, walking in the light. The understanding that the key to receiving all that God has made provisions for is faith. Faith. Faith is not doubt. Faith is not fear. Faith is believing. Right? Yes. So, he said, he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. There is help in God. God is a God of great mercy and power and love. There's nothing that he can't do. He's rich in mercy. And he's rich to all who call on his name. He said, call on me in a day of trouble and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. And hallelujah, glory to God. He just wants to show mercy. He just wants to give help to his people. The blessings of the Lord are stored up for God's people. Hallelujah, glory to God. So we must partake be a, 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 an avid uh, 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 a person that really go after God, what he has for us. Uh, God loves that uh, and he can handle it. Uh, he can take us higher heights. He can do for us individually what we long to. He heals the broken in heart. He set captives free. He healed painful memories. Oh my God. God, he heals a heart that's full of sorrow. Oh, he can heal jealousy and envy. He, he can heal anything. He, he can just do it. He specializes in things that are impossible with man. Hallelujah. He's our spiritual doctor. Hallelujah. He's the one that we must look to. So he says, call on me in a day of trouble and I will answer you and show Oh, you great and mighty things that you know not. God is a God of mercy. And he's rich to all who call on his name. Hallelujah. We need not, hallelujah, be spiritual and anemic for anyone. But there is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. He said, some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah, glory to God. He's a good savior. Hallelujah, and he's there for us. And he just loves pouring out his blessings of healing upon his people. He told Israel when he walked the face of the earth, he said, they won't come to me that they might have life. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I'll give you refreshing. I'll give you relief. Hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and lowly of heart and you'll find rest for your souls. Hallelujah. Oh, the spirit of God appeals to his people saying I'm the same yesterday and today and forever. If you read your Bible, you find that Jesus healed every kind of condition. Then that same Jesus is doing the same thing today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Wherever he finds faith, for the eyes of the Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth just to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect, sincere, looking to him for everything. He wants to do it for us all, and he's not prejudiced. Glory to God. God, he's not prejudiced. Somebody's going to get some help from God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me praise God, for he is worthy of praise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name, so good and so perfect, I've delivered what you gave for us all. I am so grateful for your care for us. I am so grateful because you love us. Somebody here today, Lord, needs freedom from unforgiveness, freedom from anger. Lord, let it settle in each heart that you're well able in the name of Jesus. Give strength where we are weak now. Strengthen our will by your power in the name of Jesus. And we are going to give you the glory. And Lord, we are asking for uh, that you would cleanse us from any wrong attitudes toward the body of Christ. If we've judged somebody, Lord God, uh, Forgive us for you've not called us to judge but to obey your word. You are the judge. We are the ones to obey your word, to love. I pray for a cleansing today for all of us. Oh God, our righteousness, cleanse us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we're not here to be popular. We're here to dispense the life of Jesus. To make ready a people prepared to meet God. I thank you, Father. May our hearts be prepared to meet our Savior. Give me a clean
a searchlight on our lives that you might be pleased and that nothing will come up in the years ahead in whatever area you want to cleanse us we stand amazed we stand in awe of you let's stand Oh God, oh God, God give us a new baptism of your love that we'll see the seriousness, oh God, of a holy walk, a walk with God. No matter who is not doing it, but that we will understand you require of us bring us closer to you Lord by your spirit we'll give your name the praise that's my wife to come right now thank you Lord we pray first of all join hands with someone if you will pray for the TV audience first Heavenly Father those that are watching us by way of television make ready your people prepared to meet Jesus oh God I thank you Lord I thank you Father if there are those Lord God that has been watching and listening by way of television I ask you now to minister that very word that they may be willing to examine themselves according to your word in the precious name of Jesus send help from your precious sanctuary oh God oh God we'll give you the glory thank you for your coming is very soon every man according to his work according to what you said in your word make us whole now make us clean touch these Lord God that are listening right now in the precious name of Jesus let the presence of our God go out and minister to them in a way Lord God that they will know God that the word is from you Jesus and not from man thank you Holy Father thank you for your Oh, God. 